Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are discussing something which is of critical importance. On the 31st of July for this month, the National Register of Assam, the final list will be published and it will be made public. The fate of about 42 lakh residents of the state is at stake. And it also fundamentally changes how we view ourselves as Indian citizens. The NRC does not have implications simply for the state of Assam, but for the rest of the country as well. And to discuss this and to talk about the kind of implications that the register will have, we have with us Dr. Hiren Gohan. Uh, he is somebody who does not need an introduction, but for our viewers, he is a poet, a literary critic, he is a social scientist, but more importantly, he is somebody who is very well connected with the essence of the state and its politics. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us and for speaking with us about this turbulent time that it is for the state and uh, like you were mentioning earlier, for the country as well. So I wanted to begin by explaining to our viewers as to the kind of implications that the NRC will have on the state and the atmosphere that the state is currently witnessing, if you could tell us more about that. Uh, thank you for having me with you to discuss uh, problems in Assam, problems of Assam, which find very little space yeah. unless there is violence in the so-called national media, you see. The NRC was not the, you know, this as contentious an yes. issue mm -hmm. when it began, as it has become now. Uh, the process started in, I think, 2006 or something. Mm -hmm. And before that, through various uh, turbulent events, as you have said, you know, violence, massacres, and displacements, uh, two communities involved here, the immigrant Muslims and the indigenous people of Assam, including the Assamese and the tribals. Uh, they came to an understanding that the very tangled question of citizenship in Assam, you know, which had rocked the state yes. for years yeah. and which had at one time led to uncontrollable how do you balance, you know? That the NRC was some sort of, was some sort of an answer uh, to these problems, you know. Yeah. That once a certain person is identified as a genuine citizen, mm. no question, no further questions will be asked. Yeah. And then everybody will be able to settle down mm. with, uh, without anxiety and resume their daily business of life. But what happened was something unexpected. Yeah. Uh, but let me say one thing that the immigrant Muslims throughout the 90s, yeah. uh, ever since the Assam Accord was signed, were actually very hostile to the idea mm -hmm. mm, for their own reasons, yeah. which may be justified or not. It depends on the way you look at it. But they were bitterly critical mm. Mm. and vehemently opposed to it. Yes. But because of the restlessness, the chaos, the uncontrollable violence, their leaders came round to accepting the Assam Accord. Yeah. And uh, once you Assam, ac accept the Assam Accord in 1971, at the cut-off year, because it was a time when Bangladesh was exactly. born, you know. Yes. And uh, that, uh, you know, people with uh, sigh of relief thought that there was a solution around the corner now, because the Muslims are on the same pace. Hmm. And uh, from all sides, there was a demand that an NRC should be prepared. Yeah. But nobody had foreseen the difficulties, exactly. the enormous and complex problems that might arise. You know. Nobody had foreseen it. For example, documentation. As yeah. you know, our common people 
have very, very little idea <laughs> of uh, uh, official documents, you know. And as you know, you know, uh, in general, mm -hmm. uh, they keep, a, keep some distance from officers hmm. and officials yes. as far as possible. And uh, if and when they produce a document, uh, it is not very thoroughly scrutinized or examined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless there are gross mistakes. But the NRC process involves very close scrutiny. Yeah. And uh, many of the, even the, the indigenous people, not to talk mm -hmm. of immigrants, don't have any documents at all. Yes. About their claims to their land, about their school certificates, this and that, they don't have any. So that was the problem nobody had yeah. foreseen. And that scrutinizing it, verifying it, finding it wrong, then uh, forcing the man to run from pillar to post, you know. These were circumstances nobody had imagined. You know. And uh, there are, you know, um, I should say vested interest, you know. Of course. Mm. Of many, all, all yeah. hues. Mm. That uh, seized the opportunity to create a row. Mm. It's a very interesting thing that you're pointing out, which is that the same anxieties yeah. that they were trying to yeah. sort of um, settle with yeah. the NRC are again resurfacing. Upon the interests of multiple political parties, the BJP has said that they are expecting, they are going to try to push the NRC to be a national uh, kind of a register. So do you see this turning into a more as to a plank of polarization? You see, I mean, they have discovered mm -hmm. that this would be a very useful ploy yeah. to polarize society, to demonize a certain community, and create mayhem, you know, from which they expect to profit. So they, of course, are taking full advantage of it. And some people are willingly playing their game. Mm -hmm. And that is what is happening in Assam also. And uh, uh, religious and ethnic chauvinisms are being encouraged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are people in all communities, you know, who play along. Yes. Mm -hmm. While the common people are bewildered, you know. Mm -hmm. They, they uh, run this way and uh, or that, and they sometimes, uh, you know, set their foot in traps. Yeah. And this is uh, happening at the moment mm. because a volatile situation is be being created. Yeah. When the NRC had begun, uh, it was expected to have been a very peaceful process. But now it has become a very divisive thing. But still, we, some of us hope to maintain that. It should go on in a fair way. And the Supreme Court should heed the difficulties faced by the people, squarely. Yeah. Mm, not from a lofty height and ignoring the real difficulties faced by the people, you know. And uh, this, uh, uh, the way that is being conducted is very bureaucratic mm. and sometimes even mindless, you know. Yes. There's another thing that people are not aware of outside Assam. It is that at the same time, parallelly, another process is being, you know, I mean, sort of run. Yeah. That is the foreigners' tribunals. Exactly. There used to be a few foreigners' tribunals tribunals and uh, every year uh, 10, 20 people would be detected and, uh, you know, de declared as foreigners and they would be sort of, some steps would be taken, you know. And that was normal and it was expected to happen, you see, because there is a border, porous border yes. and people may come in. Mm. And now there are... No, no, there are yeah. please let me continue. Yeah. Hmm. 
the, in recent times, the foreigners tribunals have been made hyperactive. Mm -hmm. okay. So that the scores and probably hundreds of people are being declared foreigners. And once somebody is declared foreigner, mm -hmm. even if his name in the, is in the NRC, yeah. after a very rigorous, painstaking process, you know, yes. he is declared a foreigner at once and a sent to the detention center, whatever. That is, I think, very unfair. It's a double jeopardy for the common man. So these are things, of course, in my opinion, that have a political origin. Hmm. Mm. That uh, doesn't necessarily follow from the NRC, you know. And uh, we had expected it to have been a very humane, fair process uh, because of the difficulties of the problem and the circumstances, the very fact that our common people have very little idea mm -hmm. of documents and verification and all that thing, sort of thing, you know. But this, didn't, this has not happened. Yes. And we have a platform of conscious citizens. We have repeatedly taken it up. Repeatedly taken it up with the coordinator of the NRC, Mr. Pratik Hazela. Okay. We have met him at least six, seven times, raising these very problems yeah. and trying to maintain a non-communal yes. outlook about the whole thing and asking people to be patient and asking the authorities to be fair. And with the kind of protests, there were a lot of protests in the state against the Citizenship Amendment Bill as well. And uh, you, for someone, uh, sedition charges were pressed against you as well in the process. So um, how difficult was that and how turbulent are situations still for those conscious citizens to keep fighting? See, it's a very puzzling thing. On the one hand, the BJP reassures people again and again. They will follow the Assam Accord to the letter. Yeah. They are going to fulfill it. The Congress had bungled it or have uh, d neglected it. They are going to sort of, you know, turn it into reality. Yeah. And now they say that they also want to get this, this cab to come in, which is a very negation of the Assam Accord. Yeah. So both these things are being maintained at the same time. And uh, I don't know how people are persuaded that this can go together. But there have been protests about this, you know, and people very, uh, you know, many uh, Assamese uh, national bodies, you know, they call themselves National Jatiyatabadidi Center. They have also protested that this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Mm. You can't have it both ways, you know. But the, the, the powers that be, that they don't listen. Yeah. Yeah. And also you feel that there is an attack on these conscious voices? Of course they are. They are. Because, you know, the very idea of fairness, the very idea of justice, equal justice for all, yes. that is a promise of our constitution, that uh, sticks in the gizzard of some people, you know. Mm. And uh, they want to normalize injustice. And in this process of sort of normalizing injustice, like you were mentioning that there is a lot of bewilderment in the state. People are having to run from pillar to post. Yes. So how do you see this anxiety, of course, reaching a vantage point now because the date of the register is finally approaching. So what happens in the future? Very difficult to say. Mm, but... Uh, You know, there are some people who are insisting, like the BJP, there are all these 44 uh, million people, must all be foreigners. You know. mm -hmm. And they also want to cherry pick out of them, you know, Hindus, yes. as apart from Muslims, you know, which uh, goes against the idea of citizenship in India, as we understand it. And, uh, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, a situation that is uh, uh, that 
it is going to be very difficult in, in, the, in times ahead, you know. But I hope that people will keep patience because uh, impatience, adventurism, and uh, mindless violence and rage will only serve the purpose of the perpetrators of injustice. Absolutely. So that is the kind yeah, of appeal. That is the kind of appeal, you know. Yes. Once violence starts, you know, then injustice is very, it becomes normal, you know. Yeah. Mm. And, and uh, in the name of peace, you can Im impose injustice. Which is a very dangerous which sort of Which is a very, very dangerous set of situations, things. And this kind of a situation being extended to the whole country, so that yeah, is. A I don't see how they are going to, going to do that. <laughs> it's a threat. It's a threat. It's a threat, and it's a kind of threat looming over the heads of the of a certain community. Yeah. Making them insecure. Mm -hmm. Making them dependent, and craven, craven su supporters of the government. You know. Absolutely. I hope they don't. Uh, you know, acquiesce. They must assert their rights as citizens of India. And the very idea of what it means to be citizens of India is something that is now being discussed. What I mean, I think, you know, the constitution itself is quite clear about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, whatever problems are there, there are problems everywhere. Migration is, has become an international problem now. Yes. So every country, every state is facing it. And humane solutions are being worked out. But people like Trump also, they're also against it. Yes. Ah, there is an attempt the world over to normalize repression, oppression, and uh, make violence the... the the, the character of the state. And all democratic people must stand against it, opposed Absolutely. to it. And uh, I think that's what we should all, we, we all should do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very strong message that you have sent, that there is violence and there are attempts which are being made to normalize violence yeah. and injustices. And uh, be it the US or be it the state of Assam in India, but we all must stand against this kind of normalization of violence. And we will end this broadcast uh, with this note and with this appeal to our viewers as well. And we will keep tracking the issue of the NRC in the state and we will keep bringing you more updates from there. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us and for giving us this very detailed understanding in a limited amount of time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me a hearing at all. Thank, Thank you. you.